Good evening. You are listening to the Wendy Lovett Show with Topher Kogan live around the world on kpsq.org and 97.3 FM in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Our guests tonight are The Odds, Nikki Rapana, Lillian Byrne, Mika Brem, and Ben Brem from Hollywood.com. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my traveling buddy, Topher Kogan. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Topher. Oh, you sound a little tired there. Do I? <laughs> what you been doing? Uh, let me see. What time is it? <laughs> I think I woke up 45 minutes ago. Oh, my goodness. So, I believe it. Yeah. But I think what it was, um, so, you know, uh, me and Xavier were supposed to have on the spot second rodeo yesterday. I know. I was so disappointed. Yeah, we had to cancel due to weather. Well, I was running for shelter because there was a tornado warning. I was very disappointed to not be actually (laughs) heading to your show. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, we rescheduled it for uh, May the 14th, so in two weeks' time. Wonderful. It was so funny the first time, so I can't wait for the second one. And I know that you have some uh, some new folks in the -hmm. the, the the on-the-spot comedy. Yeah, we got some new folks. Um... Me and Xavier again, um, since he was on the show last time, he's going to be hosting and I'm going to be participating. And then we have some MVP returners. Uh Uh-huh. So nice. it's going to be a good show. Xavier Claiborne is really funny also. So yes. it's uh, the last time I just I just remember um, it was cool to see how each comedian had their take on it, you know, because mm-hmm. you give them the words and then they have to use those. And um, what they did with it was was interesting and funny. So I look forward to the next one. And when is that again? April 14th. April 14th. Okay. At Backspace. No, not April. April. We're in May. Oh, sorry. May 14th. <laughs> sorry. May 14th. We have been traveling so much yes, that we so don't even know what month it is yeah we're so jet lagged we're back in february <laughs> it's <laughs> right, terrible right i know but it was a lot of fun it was it was fun traveling with you wendy you were a great travel buddy oh thank you i felt the same way we packed our schedule like we do right mm-hmm. <laughs> and so you um got to experience providence rhode island mm-hmm. and connecticut Yes. Which there was a tornado warning that day. Also, yeah, we had. Uh, <laughs> what is going on this? But season? you know what? Connecticut was not the nicest to us getting there. Getting there, the people were great. Right. But just getting to Connecticut both times was very difficult. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we were uh, in almost to the end of Rhode Island, actually in Wakefield. Okay. Um, remember? Uh, you, so you don't know even know where you where no, you were. I don't know what like like. <laughs> You could have kidnapped me at any point in this trip, uh-huh. and I would not have known because I just did. Like everywhere I went, I was always asking a local, like, "Where am I? <laughs> where am Do you I? know where I'm at?" <laughs> uh, it was fun though, and uh, and I'm glad that you got to experience um, all of that part of New England too, mm-hmm. and and Boston a little bit as well. Although not as much as I would have liked. I really wanted to take you to the North End with the delicious yeah. Italian food. Oh my gosh! Next time we'll have yeah, to do yeah. that. Um, but speaking of food, mm-hmm. traveling is really difficult to continue to eat healthy, isn't it? Yes. Do you know how much uh, sugar and sweets I have? I know. Well, part of it was my dear friend Zoe, who I'm sure is uh, listening, yes. kept pushing it, pie and cake on us. And yes. this is what people do. We love you, Zoe. <laughs> but it's like they're offended and feel we don't love them if we won't eat their pie. Yes. <laughs> right? Everyone does that. Oh, mm-hmm. but I made this for you, or I I bought it for you, and then you kind of feel like you should eat it. Yeah, but you know what was good though that I did really appreciate um, when we got in. Mm-hmm. Um, they had made this delicious uh, vegetarian soup that they did. was mm-hmm. amazing. That was. We thought we were going to have to go find a restaurant late at night, and mm-hmm. um, which is challenging. Also, even even there in the Northeast, where things are open a little more, uh, mm-hmm. I feel than here in, in Fayetteville. Yeah, um, it's still hard to find things that are open when it gets to be 10 o'clock at night and you want something healthy and that's good for you. So that was great. They put together a multiple vegetable vegetarian stew and some nice bread. And so that was that was good to kind of come home to. I always feel like I'm I do feel like I'm coming home. But then, like we were saying, you know, it was so busy in the Northeast and Mm -hmm. wonderful, great stuff happening. But when we landed at XNA and drove out, 
and the greenery and the cows and we were like yeah ah, <laughs> <we're home." laughs> you know yeah um but it's it's always it's always nice to visit other places and you got to experience some nice fresh seafood there i did yeah we went um i forget the name of the place i can't uh, remember it it's either. okay they're not sponsored <laughs> Um, but, um, but yeah, it was great. We had chowder and chowder on top of French fries. Yes. You, uh, you had that. You and, yeah. and Zoe, yeah, it was, it was, uh, chowder and cheese and French fries baked together. Yeah. Very it rich. It was so good. And, and then I finally got to try lobster roll. I never had one. Yes. So I was super excited. I, I looked at you when they brought all your food and you bought, you actually also got a, a very nice looking salad to go with that. Oh, yes. And, um, uh, but it was like feta. a sea of seafood, a yep. sea of food <laughs> in front of you. Um, but it was very enjoyable for sure. Um, so what was your favorite part of the trip, do you think? Hmm. I think the, I think the college visit maybe. Okay. Say, um, just because like uh, of the picture we took, which I love that picture, um, <laughs> and then also just seeing um, another college's uh, radio space because you know that's where I came from. On sure. The, um, at the U of A, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also uh, the Take Back Your Health America Bulldozer mm-hmm. um, and Growers Union festival day i don't know how to describe that day right um, <laughs> there's so much going on that was it was a great event it was wonderful that tim tyler was there mm-hmm. he was pardoned by president obama um he was in jail for cannabis mm-hmm. and he was one of the the people that received clemency from P- president obama and he spoke that was wonderful um lots of different speakers from all different uh states and walks of life talking about um, health and uh, cannabis and hemp. Um, it was great, and we had the we brought with us. So my suitcase uh, was filled with artwork. <laughs> so I uh, I couldn't uh, I couldn't bring very much clothing because I mm-hmm. had the cannabis art guild artwork in my suitcase. Which yeah, it was packed. It was packed. Which thankfully Topher helped me with that a little bit because uh, schlepping that suitcase. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, like your suitcase was like huge, and you were like, I wonder if it's under 50 pounds. And my suitcase was like, little bit now, I was like, I wonder if it's under 50 pounds. I don't know. They're both very, like, heavy suitcases. They but. were, but yours was small and more yeah. manageable for sure. Um, but it was, I was so happy. People were very interested in the Art Guild, and mm-hmm. a little bit later in the show, we'll be talking with Nikki Rapana from the Alaska Hemp Fest. Okay. And the exhibit is is going to be sent to the Alaska Hemp Fest next. Um, nice. And it's really cool because we added two, uh, three, actually, Fayetteville artists, art pieces in the exhibit as oh, a result good. of the Green Heart Festival. Nice. Yeah, the one that you always like, the Smokey and the Bear looking. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that from a Fayetteville person? That's from Fayetteville, oh, yeah. And, uh, and then another artist uh, took the hemp paper and made a ring out of it. It's, yes. it's really beautiful. And... Uh, and another actually on the hemp paper used um, items in her kitchen to mm-hmm. make paint. Yeah. So all of the paint on it is uh, is from natural products, food and wine, I guess actually. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it was it was a very varied trip from the from this uh, an event um, in Rhode Island from the speakers and the music and the the artwork and mm-hmm. and and. A little exhausting, I have to say, but 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 fun. Yes, definitely. Fun. Yeah, and you did a little bit of stand up um, in uh, Massachusetts, which was is that cool. where we were? Okay, <laughs> is that where we were? I don't know what I've been telling people. I thought were we not in Providence? No, we were in we were in Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, uh, we there we go. That. Yeah, and uh, it was very funny, and uh, we we all enjoyed that. So it's cool to connect with other comedians for you, I'm sure, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. They were so nice and. Uh, so welcoming they really were um and that was cool they kind of wanted you to kind of stick around i was wondering if you were going to just stay there and not come back with me (laughs) (laughs) well we did see those apartments that i was head over heels for or or that uh living space yeah that's true that's true well you never know you never know where life's going to take you exactly well i think it may be time for a musical guest all righty and uh they're all sitting here in the studio with us already where's uh, eh. (laughs) <laughs> I have a long title for you all, and I can't find a long title. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, the odds are here, and I love them. 
so much. <laughs> Thank you, the odds, for being here. <laughs> I can't yeah, find your. T- you can't find it. I oh can't my find goodness. the big long list. Well, okay. To rattle All off. All right. Well, the odds are here with us in the studio, and most of you are here. Actually, there's four out of five, I think, tonight. Yes. Right? Um, do you want to give us your names? I'm uh, Severino. I play the bass, and I do the backup vocals. Nice. My name is Derek Van Lynn. I'm on keyboards and a lot of the singing. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the singing. All right. Singing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ricky Erke. I play percussion. Nice to meet you all. Nate Higgins, drums. Drums. Yes, Some you, vocals. You told me you were the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I may I have guessed time. that, but I can often guess I should have done that. That's done an interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting game to play. It is. So you you all are an award winning band from Arkansas. Yes. And you've been. You've been performing for quite some time, haven't you? 16 years. I think we're in our, yeah, we're in our 17th year. 17. Our 17th year. 17 years. Track. Are you just doing the math in your head? I do like, it, you know. <laughs> well, I've had this down for three years. <laughs> <laughs> but since I joined the band three years ago. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. So you're the relative. Relative. I'm the new guy. You're yes, the, new the new guy. guy. Yeah. Right, I was going to say, you know, it's kind of like a relationship, you know, you, you, uh, the, the length of it, and you have to kind of get along, and you're touring, and uh, it's a very interesting dynamic sometimes, isn't it? It's like joining the family. <laughs> it's part of the family. Well, that's a For that's sure. a very good way to put it. Um, so I think we're going <laughs> to play one of your tracks, and uh, do we know what the the first one is called? I think it's The Big Mistake. Yes, The Big Mistake. The Big Mistake. Yeah. Do you have a little background on that? Um, <laughs> it's... Uh, the, the first lyric was from a friend of mine, kind of spurred it on. She was, uh, I, I said something about she was uh, rich, she was tall, and he said she had it all. Uh-huh. It started there, and then it was, of course, it's not going to be a good thing, even though she's rich and tall. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out to be a bad thing. Oh, goodness. All the right. It gets thrown off the plane and thrown out of the bar and put in the... In the Hooskow, this the song has the word Hooskow in it. What, all right, you have to define Hooskow. Jail. Oh, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's is that an Arkansas term? It's an Ozark term. It's yeah. an Ozark term. Yeah. Okay, I have never. Topher, have you ever heard that term before? I've never heard Hooskow. Hooskow. Yeah. All right. Ca- County jail specifically. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Right. all right. County jail. Well, let's hear it. <laughs> all righty.
that guitar thank you yeah cool um so that song is from some time ago do you remember when that came out 2003 2003 okay cool nice well it's uh I'm, i really enjoyed that the the um all the instrumentation was really great we had people yeah. dancing uh saturday night in, in rogers uh -huh. to that to that song to that song yeah, just yeah, last yeah, saturday yeah. Yeah. no yeah female people <laughs> <laughs> in, in their chairs. Not female people. Oh, on the table. They, they, they gave us some money and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> they had to tell him to get off the chairs. Uh -huh. they, they asked me if we get paid for this. We, we get tipped. Oh, you get tipped, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the artist's life. <laughs> so what are we going to hear next? Um, we're going to hear... Um, did Not Tell. Yeah, Did Not Tell. It's got a lot of your vocals on it, Seth. So. Yeah. Oh, so nice. All right. It's called Did Not Tell. Did Not Tell. It, it won some awards. Uh, it, oh, it did? Song of the Year. 2004, 2005. It was the Song of the Year for the Ozark Music Awards. Something like that. Oh, like nice. Plaque. You know, we were just talking about that, so I don't think there aren't any Ozark no, Music Awards they anymore. they don't exist anymore, yeah. But I would love to do that uh, through this station. I think we should get the music awards I, going yeah, again. Bring yeah, bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back. What do you think, Topher? All the musicians all together. Yes, yes more stuff that, that I can host. Yes. Yeah. More stuff for him to host, right? All right. Well, let's hear it. All righty. that so i grew up in the 70s and that sound is so familiar to me it's it got just, a good 70s feel to it it, it does i yeah. love it yeah. <laughs> nice and that was that was you on vocals that was me on the background vocals. oh back was Darren okay mm -hmm. yeah love that so thank you so much for being here oh, yeah. where, where, yeah, can people, where can people find your music 
everywhere. <laughs> the internet. Uh, yeah, yeah. On the internet, usually. Uh -huh. Facebook, the odds, NWA is the place to, Great. to live for. Great. And then do you have uh, do you have it up on uh, one of the other formats, like Reverb Nation? Or? Jam, bass. Uh -huh. we're, on, well, we're on Reverb Nation. Reverb yes. Nation. Yes, yes, excellent. We have Spotify. a few songs there. Oh, and on Spotify, wonderful. So people can check it out. And when's your next gig coming up? Um, when's the next gig? We're playing a couple of couple of JJ's gigs and then a George George's gig. Wonderful. And so people can find that on your Facebook page, right. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Great. All of our gigs are posted on our Facebook page. Yeah. Wonderful. Little well, Eureka Spring. Well, I hope you'll stick oh, around for the end when we all chat together. And, oh, yeah. and thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Thanks oh, yeah. Thanks yeah. For a lot of fun. It, thank you. Thank you. I think it might be time for our favorite segment. Is it? Mm hmm. The Green Zone. Yes. When I woke up this morning, take a look at my clock. It's way past noontime. Now I'm late for work. We are in the green zone and we're trying to reach Nikki Rapana. Uh, Nikki is a social justice activist, cannabis advocate, author, publisher, creator of the Gertie D, uh, DIY Yurt brand, co-founder of the Extreme Climate Housing School, musician, artist, and educator. And she is also one of the founders of the Alaska Hemp Fest, um, which has been held every summer on Solstice since 2016. And so we're really excited to speak yeah. with um, with Nikki, and I think Topher may have her on the line just now. No? All right. Well, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what's been happening with the Alaska Hemp Fest. So um, uh, the the uh, organization was actually fined $10,000 uh, by the Marijuana Control Board uh, for public consumption at the event, which is illegal. It's actually illegal in every state you can't even in legal states that have full legal legalization you don't uh public consumption is not allowed um, i think we have nikki on the line now hi nikki hi hi we, we were able to reach you i'm so happy how are you tonight oh i'm great it's so beautiful here it's like um, it feels like summer already Crazy. Oh, nice. Well, it it feels like summer here today, but we've we've had uh, lots of crazy weather, tornado warnings, and rain and driving rain. But today's mm -hmm. been lovely, so I'm glad it is there too. And uh, I was just uh, introducing you to our listeners, and um, I know that you're one of the founders of the Alaska Hemp Fest, um, which uh, has been held every summer on Solstice since 2016. Correct. Yes, yes. We're on our fourth now. The fourth year, great. And um, I know that you just went through um, some issues surrounding public consumption. So what what happened there? Well, I was fined for allowing it at the event. There was a lot of confusion over what's public property and what's private property. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think this will clear things up, the decision. I did dispute it. I appealed it in the um, administrative court, and um, the decision will be come out within the next 30 days. Uh, my fine got lessened from 10000 to $100. Oh, so well, that's good. I really feel yeah. <laughs> like I won that part of it anyway. Right. And, yeah, we're moving ahead with the, the new festival uh, plans. Um, they got a little bit held up because I was pretty caught up with the uh, the appeal all winter. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're raring to go. We got a lot of good people coming on board very quickly. It always happens this way too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, right at the end, more people hear about it, and then it, it just grows. So right. So let's talk a little bit about consumption because you brought up a really good point. And Topher and I were just in Rhode Island at an mm -hmm. event on private property where people could consume. Um, but it's always a little bit sticky, and the police, depending on where you are, may feel differently about whether it's private or public, right? Right. Well, the, the law in Alaska, inside the legalization of uh, recreational marijuana, uh, was a, a statute was created forbidding public consumption of marijuana. 
And the definition of public, uh, as people understand it, is not the same as what the state has decided that they are going to enforce, which is any time there's a substantial uh, number of people at any event on private property, it can, in their mind, become public. And I think that this is what the judge is going to be looking at very closely in my case. Um, he seemed like a real fair man. Mm -hmm. I liked him a lot. I was kind of surprised. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I made friends with the Amco investigator. Um, you know, I mean, it wasn't as bad as I. Um, I was just so nervous. Okay, because this sure. is something I normally do. But I I felt it was important to at least make the appeal without an attorney because I lost my attorney a few months back. And I didn't have the money to, to buy one, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I, I i mean, I shouldn't have done it, maybe. But I had to. I had to. I mean, first of all, I didn't feel like I was guilty. I feel like um, that was stretching it quite a bit, saying that I promoted it, which I did not, you know. So I had to go in and defend myself on those terms. But also for the, the vendors and the people who were camping at our event, we rent campsites, we rent uh, private spaces, we had a separate area over 21, and it was all on private property, mm -hmm. residential property. So we really felt we'd covered it, and the, the attendees were happy with the, the separation, because in our public area, we didn't have any tobacco smoking, no alcohol consumption, nothing like that. Right. It was like, that's the public area. Right, and that's interesting, too. You know, so we just held the Green Heart Festival here in Fayetteville, and we did not have alcohol either. Um, you know, we're not allowing these things that are so harmful to the body. And, of course, here we couldn't allow any um, consumption of cannabis because they still have not implemented their program here. And, and even so, there's no public consumption. So then... Are we on private property? Well, we were, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, in the future, as things roll out here, we'll have to look at that closely. But um, but it's a very interesting... I think every state is going to... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to Yeah, that's that, okay. Go right ahead. I think every state is facing this, because I've been trying to, to look it up in my spare time, mm -hmm. and I think every uh, state that's legalized, there's 28 of them now, um either have it on the table or have already done it. I, maybe I'm wrong on the number, but anyway. It keeps changing. I haven't found yeah. one Go ahead. It yeah, keeps it changing all the time. Good. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's hard to keep up with. But the, they all say no public consumption somewhere in their law. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of legalizing it to sell and not to consume is just ridiculous to me, okay? Uh, personally, I, I, in the beginning when I heard that, I was like, well, what did that do then, you know? Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean now we can buy, we can, you know, under legalization, Alaskans can have, at home, their home grows are less than what they were before legalization. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, you know, I mean, let's face it, what we really need is to end prohibition, schedule and let people grow their medicine and that's what I'm always uh, pushing for in my um, activism because these legal legalization brings up all these other issues and it really what it comes down to is you know it's to serve people who, who have money to make more money basically um, and the people still get stuck and it's it is it's crazy to go to an event be able to purchase but not be able to consume it just doesn't make any sense no, and what we they had inside the statute that legalized it here, they included the option for on-site consumption attached to the recreational stores. So people are pretty happy about that. I don't particularly like it because it limits it, it, the, the whole concept behind the on-site was that you come in and you try a gram maximum, um, and then you leave, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> and they don't, and they don't want to encourage loitering. And I'm like, well, that doesn't sound very fun for Alaskans at all. We don't just want them to smoke a gram and leave. Right. We want to go play pool and play darts and hang out, you know. Sure. <laughs> so yeah. it, it, it doesn't sound very fun, but it, it's for the tourists primarily, um, so that they have somewhere to go. And I understand wanting to provide that for the tourists, but I also see that Alaskans got kind of left in the, you know, in the wake of all this, mm -hmm. we're the ones that, that don't have our 
specific expectations under the law. People voted for it. Our campaign said regulate marijuana like alcohol. And a lot of people didn't actually read the bill, okay, or whatever mm -hmm. the initiative that they were voting for, which prohibited public consumption. They thought it would be regulated like alcohol, and that would mean you could drink it or, or smoke it wherever you could drink. Mm -hmm. And um, they were pretty excited, and I'm one of those fools who assumed that. Right. Well, I don't, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you're alone. I think in other states, too, people make that assumption, but it's really important to read through the initiative see what you're really voting for. And though we all want everyone to have access, sometimes it means maybe not voting for an initiative that really won't serve the people. Um, but it sounds like things are working out and moving forward. And, uh, and I wanted to just mention that I'll soon be mailing you the Cannabis Art Guild exhibit for the Alaska Hemp Fest, and I'm really oh. excited about that. Oh, so are we. That's just so wonderful. You know, I teased Lee and made him think that I thought that everyone was coming, all the artists. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be and nice? Hey, like, Topher, do you want to go to Alaska? Should we go to Alaska? Yes, one of these years, we'll just keep, you know, we're growing really small. We're, I mean, we started small and we're growing, you know, a very grassroots thing we're doing here. But I can see in a couple of years... Yeah, you know, having things really anyway. sure growing yeah. and expanding. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and uh, what time is it in Alaska? It's about three thirty, probably. Oh, okay. Well, enjoy four twenty when it comes. <laughs> 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 and and thanks again for joining us. It's been great. And thank thanks for having me, and I'm looking forward to the art and um, you know I'll be promoting your show. This is just wonderful. Thank you. Great. Thanks thank you. again. Bye bye. Our health guest tonight is Lillian Byrne. Lillian is a healer, motivational speaker, and teacher whose goal it is to help people improve the quality of their inner and outer life. She's a licensed marriage, family, and child therapist, certified non-denominational minister, clinical hypnotherapist, and neuro-linguistic and cellular trauma release practitioner with a lifetime teaching credential in psychology. Welcome to the show, Lillian. I feel so happy to be here. It's great to have you here, and what quite a list of accomplishments you have. Yes. Yes, you've been and, doing... And I didn't put in there that I'm also the founder of five nonprofits in California. Oh, right. You had told me that before. That is so remarkable. Yeah. Thank you for doing that uh, yes, to help yes. people. So the ripples of what I've done are huge. Yes. Because some of it is personal and some of it is through teaching. Yes. I, and I not only work with clients individually and couples and families, but I also teach classes. And so the ripples are enormous. Yes. And, I'm, um, you know, it, it makes my soul sing mm -hmm. that I've been able to contribute. And really, my big goal is to diminish the amount of suffering in this world mm -hmm. and to increase people's health and well-being mm -hmm. in every possible way, mentally, emotionally, physically, relationally, spiritually. It's all connected, isn't it's it? It's all connected. Yes. That's why I'm holistic. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit. To, we were going to talk tonight about trauma. Yes. And uh, all, of, all of that that, that entails to a person's health. This yes. This is a really important topic. Yes, yes. So I discovered that... A lot of the things that people, um, that keep people from functioning at their best level on a any of these mentally, emotionally, physically, and relationally, that because I've always wanted to not just work with symptoms, I've wanted to deal with all the causes mm -hmm. so that people could totally heal. And what I've discovered is that trauma is the largest underlying cause for people's suffering and for people's malfunction and even for people's cruelty to others, you know, mm -hmm. because trauma gets passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And so they're perpetrators and then they're victims and then they're rescuers. But as as it passes down the generations, um, it sort of keeps spiraling. So <clears throat> one of the messages that I want to give to people here is that if you choose to heal from your traumas, 
this is the most amazing, the most noble, the most important thing you could do with your life. Right. Well, when you were talking about the ripple in the pond effect from starting up nonprofits, it's the same when someone heals from trauma, isn't it? The ripple yes. effect to, yes. to everyone connected to them. Yes. And and so let's talk a little bit more about that because over the years people have come to me with many, many complaints, you know, uh, things like wanting to lose weight or things like addictions or things like negative patterns in relationships mm -hmm or things like even physical pain. And I don't do manipulation. I don't deal with the pain directly, but I, um, I work with the causes, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what I discovered is almost all the time some kind of trauma, many layers of trauma sometimes, not right. just one trauma, right. but repetitive layers. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the thing that amazed me many years ago, because I've been a therapist for 46 years, so nothing amazes me now. <laughs> You've probably heard and seen it all. I have, I have, I have. <laughs> Although this guy, I don't know, he you may know. have something new for you. I don't know. But Are you saying I have problems that I need to work out with? <laughs> but anyway, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, don't we all? some people don't recognize their problems, but a yeah. lot of these people didn't even realize that they were traumatized as children mm -hmm. or traumatized in their relationships. And I'm like, oh, my God, how could you not know that? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I um, kind of like on a smaller uh, um, millennially scale of it. But um, I was on, on uh, Twitter uh, the, the other day, and I saw somebody, like, make a post that was like, parents um, mess you up even if they did the best they could, like yes. they still mess you up and that's just what's going to happen and you're going to mess up your kids anyway, you know? Yes, and so, but it's not inevitable. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, it's not inevitable? No. Oh. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. If you, mm -hmm. an adult now, yeah. chooses to heal all their traumas, then that gets cut. It never, there's nothing to pass on. You don't mess up anybody else's life anymore. How and great would that be if yes. people were able to do that? That's exactly why I'm saying it's so important. Right. So you're not just healing yourself, but you're stopping that chain mm -hmm. of the hurt being passed down and down and down generations. I've worked with as many as four generations in one family. Wow. And, and when that stops, is like the most amazing thing. Mm -hmm. right. So, and, and so one message is anything that hurts you that you wouldn't have chosen that leaves a mark so that you're no longer who you were before that is trauma. That's my definition of trauma. Any, anything, even if it, it wasn't an intentional hurt or abuse toward you. It could be, it could be an accident. It could be mm -hmm. um, maltreatment as a child mm -hmm. with either words or with being beaten or sexual abuse. But it could also be neglect. Mm -hmm. Parents that don't take care of their kids, that let them run wild, that don't give them boundaries. That could also be uh, trauma. So there's traumas of omission and traumas of commission. Interesting. I know I, I used to say to people frequently, you know, what kids really need is love and security. Yes. And some of the things you mentioned are included in that. Yes. And when the, when even the best parents might not provide enough of that security. Yes. You know. But also children don't need punishment. Punishment hurts but it doesn't teach. Hmm. Uh huh. So anyway, <laughs> I mean, when I teach classes, and so one of my classes that I've taught <laughs> hundreds of times is um, democratic parenting to teach people stuff to do with children that's not punishment, because punishment is one of the ways that children get traumatized. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We're in a state where I hear from friends here that you know their parents told them to go out and get a switch yes right mm -hmm. i had never heard of such a thing coming from yeah. the northeast oh yeah, yeah. selecting the yeah. selecting what they're gonna hit you with yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that long Awful. walk of yeah ooh, ooh, yeah agony sounds like you've been through it <laughs> oh many times ooh. so anyway so you don't want to do that to your kids oh no say um say me and uh my siblings like we've had like like um conversations about oh when we have kids like we're not going to hit them 
Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you can totally live by that, mm-hmm. not touch them at all, you're a hero. <laughs> Seriously. Not touch them except in a loving not way. Not touch them <laughs> right. with anger. Yeah. Not hurt them. If you can totally live to that. Because many people make that pledge and then they get triggered when their children are there and then they don't do what they said they were going to do. Mm-hmm. Just right. like with addictions, many people choose to be clean and sober, and then they go back. And so <clears throat> one of the things that I also wanted to mention here in this program is that words can heal and words can wound. And so some trauma is not physical at all. It could be mental trauma, emotional trauma, mm-hmm. through people being verbally abusive to their children. And a lot of people don't understand that that's traumatic and can cause amazing wounds. Mm-hmm. Right. And then another thing that I also want to say is that with words alone, trauma won't heal at the deepest possible level because the injury is in the energy field the injury is also in the tissues. Mm -hmm. And so part of my message here is if you decide to go and be in therapy, don't just do talking therapy. Find somebody that does energy psychology, energy work, hands-on healing work, as well as talking therapy. Because, you know, your body is listening. You know, it's not just your, through your ears and the communication through your mouth, but your your whole being is listening when these traumatic events might happen. Yes. And so that it seems like that makes a lot of sense to me. It would kind of go into the It's tissues. not only that the body is listening, but what's in our mind and what's in our emotions then affects the body. And so it also affects the energy field. Mm-hmm. And the memory may not be a conscious memory, but it still is affecting you. You still, and and I saw your two-minute sign. The other thing that I wanted to say is that when people are traumatized, they then have defense mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And these defense mechanisms help people survive, and they're helpful when we're children and we're traumatized, Mm -hmm. or when you're in the service and you're in a war. The defense mechanisms help you. Mm -hmm. for a moment, for that scenario, for that time. But later, those defense mechanisms is what makes your life miserable because you're always in reactive mode and you're defending yourself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the harmful habits come from those defense mechanisms. And so people have the illusion of being free and safe, and they're really not either. Right, that reaction comes up automatically. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, that was uh, something that um, that I had to learn, um, you know, a while ago was that surviving is not the same thing as being healthy. Like Correct. It's not. Yeah. yeah. Surviving is, is just, you know, making it, being mm-hmm. alive, but thriving and mm-hmm. being healthy and being well and being free. Mm-hmm. That's a whole different yes, story. You're speaking my language. I like it. Yes. So where can people reach you, Lillian? I have a private practice in... Um, here in northern Arkansas, northwestern Arkansas, in Rogers, Arkansas. And uh, I have an office at home, but I will travel to teach classes to small groups. So if you guys want me to teach something, um, call me at 479-387-2108. Lillian Byrne, 479-387-2108. That could be for an appointment, but it could also be to set up a class. I can teach in churches, in businesses, in schools, and I have, um, I don't need a whole lot of people. A dozen people is enough for me to take a trip and teach in your area. Excellent. Yes. Well, thanks so much for all your fine work and for being here, and I hope you'll stick around for the end of the show. I'll stick around because I'm curious about the next folks that are coming here. Oh, yes. We're very excited. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Thank thank you you so much. And I want to come back. Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll have you back anytime. All right. All right. Well, we have added on some special guests tonight. Oh, and very special guests tonight. Yes, and they are entering the studio now. Um, we're so excited to have uh, Mika, Mika Baram and Ben Baram. Um, Mika and Ben are father and daughter duo who are here in town for the premiere of their movie that they created together, 
HollyWood.com. Welcome to the show, Mika and Ben. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having us on. We are excited. so excited. <laughs> I'm I excited love you guys. Too. I was just listening out there, I'm going, oh man, I've got to be able to get this show in LA. I've got to hear these. Oh, songs. you definitely this is can. so cool. Yeah, you definitely cool. can listen. All right. You can listen, that's why I say around the world <laughs> and in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So, Ben, you are originally from Arkansas, right? Marshall. Marshall, Arkansas. Where is that near? I'm not um, sure if I've been Marshall to Marshall. Marshall is on the Buffalo River. I actually learned to swim in the Buffalo River. You did. It's where Buffalo River and Bear Creek meet. Not that that means much to a lot of people. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's where I grew up. It's about from uh, Branson. It's If you go straight south from Branson, it is about... Uh, 50, 60 miles, okay. something like that. All right, I kind of have an idea south. now. Yes. And uh, Mika, you are so impressive. I cannot, I'm so excited to hear this in the studio. You have been in 40 films at least, right? Yeah, that's so kind of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, including many that, that I've seen, and I'm sure you have The Patriot, yes. Blue Crush, Riding in Cars with Boys, I love that one, <laughs> and Jack Frost. I know the list seems endless. Um, so thank you so much for bringing this film for a premiere in. Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Yeah, we were excited. We wanted to do something different, and so we thought, how much fun to do that here rather than doing it in L.A. or New York, mm -hmm. and we can get all of our family in, yes. which is great. makes it for uh, easy travel, and we've got the red carpet. I know. So Topher and I were super excited about the red carpet. We were yes. like, what are we going to wear? And then I saw <laughs> on your site it says anything from overalls to a tuxedo. Yes. <laughs> so I guess yes. anything's going to go on this red carpet. And we were excited, too, because we got news um, that uh, one of the uh, awesome uh, people who lives in Eureka Springs, Vance, has bought black t uh, has bought black overalls. Oh, how the <laughs> cool. Oh, nice. How fancy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Topher so loves overalls. I do. I love an overall. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love an overall and... A jumpsuit. Yes. Um, level there you go. Yeah. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking about getting a jumpsuit yes. and just have kind of like some old tuxedo type stuff. Oh, on yeah. It. And yeah. I was thinking about that and I'd found a couple of them in a thrift store. I was excited. Uh -huh. But I went back to the thrift store and they were gone. Like, oh, no. Man, this is just not oh, life. my goodness. Well, have you been to Cheap Thrills? That they, they have. You, you got to check out. You, oh, you, probably, you I might love be. Cheap Thrills, though. It sounds yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. It sounds fun. Here, in, here in Fayetteville, you may be able to find that there. They have they have really cool cool stuff. I was just there. My son actually was just visiting during our festival, and and, uh, and he and his uh, partner were so excited to be there. The thrifting is here is wonderful. Ooh. Yeah, so you check that out. I know you've been super busy and probably not a lot, a lot of time to thrift. But let's talk a little bit about the film. So this is your directorial debut yes this yes. is my directorial debut so I am um, this is a, a feature length film and so I had done uh, some short films in the past and some music videos and experimental films um, and those I did the festival circuit with but this is um, my full directorial debut and so we've decided that uh, we're just gonna have our have our screening here and then get out there and sell it but it's a uh, it's a fun movie. It's an adventure comedy. It's got uh, mm -hmm. Tom Arnold in it. It's got Devin Mertray in it. Cody Cash. Um, Paige Howard. <laughs> the list. Right? <laughs> Great um, cast. Great oh, yeah, cast. We have uh, Brian Cross. Brian Cross from Charmed. He's in it. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, you love Charmed. I love you? Charmed. Yes. Leo the White Knight. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. I know who that is. I know who that is. Yeah. Great. That's uh, fantastic. Billy Bob Thornton's band, the Box Masters, did, uh, they threw a cameo in and threw a couple songs in. Nice. It was super cool. And we have animation in the movie, which is really wild. Oh. It's kind of it's kind of an old school comedy, isn't it? Which I love. I looked at the trailer and just even the, the brightness of it and the whole adventure, you can feel it, you know, just looking at that trailer. It's fantastic. So. Yeah, so that was something that we that we especially wanted to go for was we wanted to do something that was sort of like a throwback film that's you know get shorty meets romancing the stone. Mm -hmm. My dad and I both love romancing the stone. I do too. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. just love that movie, and it kind of worked out that way naturally anyway because um, when we got together to write a film, uh, 
my side of the of of, of writing was uh, what I was familiar with was the all Hollywood stuff because mm-hmm. I had been acting so long. And then for my dad, what he was familiar with was more on like the gemology. Uh, and Shannon Stone, he oh, loves right. Latin America. He you're, are you a, you're a gemologist. Yeah, I'm a you? gemologist, right. a bush pilot, helicopter pilot, uh-huh. and I've worked all over the world. And as a matter of fact, when we started this project, I was working in Madagascar, and then Mika said, you know, Dad, let's do this. And we go, I go, okay, cool, I'll just uh, uh-huh. stop, but I thought I'd finish in six or eight months. I didn't realize three years later, two and a half years later, <laughs> here we are sitting in Fayetteville getting ready, yeah, yes. but you know what, it was worth every minute of it. Wonderful. So. How great that you could work together and create this together. That's a beautiful thing. I love it. Yeah. There's also a little backstory of how we kind of like the beginning of this. So the idea is it has enchanted curse jade in it, and in the beginning of this, we... Uh, my, my daughter and I was at the Tucson Gym Show, which happens every year. It's oh, three right. weeks. Uh-huh. And so we were, uh, I was looking at some Guatemalan jade there, and someone had mentioned it's really difficult to acquire Guatemalan jade. Oh, right. And so I said, okay, well, cool. So it was at the beginning of the gym show, so we jump in an airplane, go to Guatemala, we go up, we find out where the jade's at, we hike up into the mountains, uh-huh. and uh, we, we meet a group of Indians up there. They go they go back up into the mountains. We came back a couple of days later. So they had all this jade piled up. Mm-hmm. And so Mika's filming everything because, oh, first of all, she was going, you know, I said, I'm going to Guatemala. She goes, I'm going to Dad. And I'm going, no way. No, no, no. She you know, I, I, have been, I have been to Guatemala. I love it there. And I know exactly what you're talking about. I can picture it. I love Panajachel, actually. I don't know if you went there. Wonderful, Jade. Uh, I learned yeah. to ski on that in Panache. Oh, you did? You better believe it. That is nice. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so what happened was, while we were there, so they were showing us the regular Jade. They pulled out a piece of Jade that actually came from a tomb. And so when the Mayan oh. royalty would die, they would put a piece of Jade in their mouth so their spirit could leave their body. So these guys were going, hey, this is worth a lot, and they're trying to sell it to me. And everybody's real serious, and they're sitting around. I'm just going like... I'm going, dude, and I'm speaking, I speak fluent Spanish, but I'm talking in Spanish uh-huh. to make his film and the whole thing, and yeah. I'm going, uh, dude, I don't want anything, and uh, they come out with Jade, it could be cursed. I go, I could have things start to fall off. And so everybody went from being <laughs> super serious. So everybody's like, okay, first everybody's like real stone-faced, and they're sitting there, and there's about eight guys. Everybody started cracking up, and then all of a sudden all these little kids come out of the bushes, and then it just, everything oh, yeah. changed. It just uh-huh. turned into this. So a couple of so we, oh anyway so we got three hundred pounds of jade went back to L.A. went to Tucson gym show sold half of it I got the other half around the office and then a couple of years later we want to do this movie and so it has cursed jade from Ooh, Guatemala yeah. and you already just, have it right, right? Yeah. well it was, no I didn't take that oh, cursed oh, oh you didn't okay. no no right. way, no, no way. <laughs> but it sparked the idea that we had for this movie so uh-huh. okay. nice oh all right well there you go. Full circle there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so now we're gearing that. up. Yep. We've got the red carpet that we're doing for our event. We've got the red carpet. We've got a comedian host. We've got a lot of the actors coming yes, in. Yes, nice. Trickling in. And you, but you have a giant screen, you told me, too. Yeah. yeah we, you know, it was, a, it was a really wonderful thing because um, we, we got the best of both worlds. We're at the auditorium in Eureka Springs, and so we have that cool, historic old town. <laughs> and then... Um, the Arkansas Film Commissioner was so amazing, Christopher Crane. He brought in a top of the line projector and a top of the line screen, so we get to nice. marry those two together. Wonderful. I love it. With the, with the high tech, so yeah. we're excited. Well, if anyone wants to call in, we could probably take a call or two, 479 966 4667. That's 479 966 4667. And we've got the odds in the studio with us, and Lillian Byrne, and. Uh, so, uh, Lillian, I think yes. you're from uh, Central America, aren't you? No, no, I was born in Quito, Ecuador. Oh, Ecuador. I grew up in Caracas, Venezuela. Okay. So, he and I were already es- hablando español. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were hitting it on. Yeah, yeah we both lived in Venezuela, because I lived in Venezuela, uh-huh. and I worked with diamonds there up near the yeah. Brazilian Angel Falls. Right. So, we, were so we both talked about Angel Falls, because I've been there oh, nice. a few times years ago. It's probably... Canaima, I consider it the most beautiful place that I've seen on planet Earth when I saw it, which is a lot of years ago, like 30. I felt 40. that way about Panahashel. I just remember coming yeah, in on that bus and the volcanoes. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, no, it's enchanting. Yeah. <laughs> but I have not been there, so I'll have to someday do that. There's a place where there's a black lagoon and seven waterfalls. Oh, nice. Must be beautiful. And the water is black. 
Wow. Totally black. But you can see right through it. I've not really? seen that anywhere else. Why is it yes. black? Do we from know? the tannin, from the jungle. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Cool. That's, uh, that that's sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What I want to see just, that now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave here. Let's go there. Let's go, guys. Wait a minute. Is it, what is the <laughs> premiere on Saturday? <laughs> oh, yeah, after one more Saturday. Detail. We have to one more detail. Sunday. You see his shirt? Yes. Yeah. I actually saw a beach over there that looked like that pink sand. Pink Ooh, sand. Wow. Yes. wow. I feel like, where was I? Oh, Bermuda, maybe, yeah. with the pink sand like that? Uh, or maybe it's pinker, I don't know. I haven't been there, but that's beautiful. Yeah. Very calming. Thank you. I love this shirt. Um, <laughs> it looks nice on happy you. Happy I can help. It's very becoming. <laughs> <laughs> and you wear it well. Oh, thank you. So, Tilfer, what are you going to wear to the premiere on Saturday night? What am I wearing to the premiere? Um, not overalls, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> nor a jumpsuit. I'm just keeping it um, classical. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, dress pants. And a blazer. Oh, nice. All right. I'm a little surprised. Maybe a brooch. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I like the brooch. Bring in the brooch. Yeah. I think you should bring the brooch for yes. sure. For sure. So um, where can people get tickets for the premiere? Uh, you can get tickets at uh, www. W, did I say three of those? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hollywoodcon.org. So it's Hollywoodcon.org. And, and the film is called Hollywood Con. Hollywood.com, Hollywood Con. Con. yeah. But I kept, I'm posting it all over social media, and I have to back up a little bit because um, for some reason my brain couldn't wrap around that. I don't know why because we're always saying dot .com, you know. So You can yeah. also get tickets at uh, the odd dot, the odd org too, which is T-H-E-A-U-D.org. Oh. The odd, oh, like auditorium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The odds are here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you selling oh, tickets? Just touch with the odds, so. Yeah, we've grabbed them to help us with tickets. Come on, come on, guys. We love you. They're actually part of our crew. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. We're hard. We just don't fell, know it yet. <laughs> one fell swoop. You've got to uh, add additions to your crew. There you go. Um, so it's really exciting, and I'm so happy that you brought this um, to Eureka Springs, which is a really cool and funky place, like Fayetteville is. I do have a question. So you mentioned a comedic host. Can you disclose who that is? On yes. Okay. Who is that? Uh, so her name is Jackie Poochie. Okay. And she is just so funny and awesome. She's out of Las Vegas. And um, she was from the TV show. Uh, it's a true TV show called All Worked Up. Have you seen that? I it's believe. Pretty maybe. good. Yeah. Yeah. All Worked Up. Okay. I'll have to Jackie check that out. All amazing. Worked Up. And she gets she all worked up with it. Every, <laughs> she will have that town going nuts. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm nuts. excited. Yeah. Jackie she is. is something else. She is fun. And then we have a special uh, pre-show that we're going to do right before the movie as well that we've teamed up with um, Nightmare Haunted House, Chris Michaels' Nightmare Haunted House out mm -hmm. of uh, Rogers. Yeah. Um, and so they're going to do this wacky pre-show with nice. some Lucha Libre masks and stilts and like, okay, some okay, of major enough giveaways. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is top secret stuff, Mickey. You All are right. not so Cool. Well, well unfortunately, we have to wrap up. I'm so excited. Thank you to the odds and Lillian Byrne and Mika oh, yeah. and Ben. Thank you so much for being here tonight. It's been a great show, and we will see you Saturday night in Eureka. Oh, and awesome. He's been Topher. And she's been Wendy. We'll catch you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.